It's time for Screen Junkies Movie Fights. What up, y'all? It's Movie Fights, hashtag Movie Fights Live. Happy Thanksgiving. That's a turkey. I hope you're... I, I hope you're eating turkey, and I hope you're not eating owls. Hoot hoot. What up, Owl Nation? Hashtag Owl Nation. Where are my gahooligans at? It's Movie Fights. We got the Honest Trailer Boys in the house. Oh, yeah. It's always a good time when these this house is divided against itself, and these pals go to war in the Movie Fights squared circle. Uh, first, you know him. You love him. He's got a nice beard. Joe Thank Star. You. Thank you very much, Hal Rudnick. Oh, Joe. I like what's going on up here. I don't know if I told you that last time. Oh, thanks, brother. I appreciate it. You're you know who doesn't like it? My fiance. <laughs> <laughs> she is not a fan. Of, she's like uh, the least. Uh, she is like the anti mustache club, but uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, this young man, he's the most finicky eater you'll have at your Thanksgiving Day table. Yeah. Spencer Gilbert. Thank you, Hal. And if this doesn't work out uh, with the mustache, you can always stand outside Italian restaurants and beckon them inside for fresh <laughs> pasta and pie. <laughs> Don't racially profile uh, my uh, Italian mustache. Saying you got options. Okay. Now, you know what? Uh, noted. Um, I, so I, it's a me. It's a me. Hey, the pizza pasta, pizza pasta. Oh, wow. Lasagna. You're going way farther than I went. I was just having a light fun stereotyping, and you're doing the bad I'm one. I'm going to have to issue an official apology. <laughs> <laughs> and this man is the movie fights champion, and uh, you know him from all over screen junkies and all over uh, internet movie trivia schmodowns etc Dan Merle yes and I will take issue anyone that's had a Thanksgiving with me knows that I am the most finicky eater you will ever have in your oh. Thanksgiving dinner mm -hmm. I gotcha. eat three things oh what are those things uh, at a Thanksgiving dinner yeah Ham. turkey yep uh, a sweet potato casserole yep or pie and uh, bread <laughs> wow. wow. All right. Oh, you know what? You just took the crown. And uh, and uh, Dan, for the record, belt not on the line today. No, we're having fun. Yeah, we yeah. I, I believe that there are machinations underway soon to get the, to get a belt match together. Billy Business is nodding yes. So. We all got roped into this because apparently this isn't how people want to spend their Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Okay. Um, thank you, fellas. And deciding each of the questions and the points in the rounds, we have uh, Juan and Danielle, the Wandan calling. Nice. <laughs> you did it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Juan Harris, how you doing, my friend? Doing great. I also enjoy your mustache, so well done. You're getting uh, approval all around. Thanks, Ooh. brother. And I enjoy you being a pillar of our Nation, of the rear admiral of our Owl Nation. And proud. Proud to call myself a rear admiral. Hoot hoot. <laughs> and uh, so Juan and I will be chiming in with our thoughts and decisions on each question we for shall. the first three rounds. Absolutely. And your poll will also decide uh, a vote. Not today. Oh, not there today. is no poll. <laughs> what? Yeah. This is not live. It's not live. <laughs> You're welcome to sit at home and vote, but we are not going to see it. It will not matter. What? If you ever it's wondered if I'm on autopilot or <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's your answer. Um, we'll all be deciding. Usually our social media ambassador, now just an ambassador of goodwill, fun, and her opinions, Danielle Radford. Oh. What up? So, so today I have my own opinions, um, but I will be um, around the regular movie fights time. I'm going to be going through your comments and retweeting and looking at some of the stuff oh. that y'all see because you do such good work every week. Um, so please, Movie Fights Live on the hashtag. I am going to be in there and I'm going to be active. Also, thank you, Dan, for reminding me to buy yams. I almost forgot. Mm. Gotta get yams. Gotta get yams, dude. Have the yams handy. Get those yams handy. <laughs> and uh, like a handy one, yam. <laughs> a handy yam, candy yam. Mm -hmm. So, okay. sorry, swallowing. Here's. <laughs> Boy, uh, here I, once again. Here's how it works. This is a uh, best of seven. First person to four points wins. So there are three regular rounds. Our two top performers of these three will move on to the speed round. Then it's anybody's ball game. Someone can be down 3-0 and make a furious comeback in the speed round. Again, first player to four takes the day. JTE, drop that sick ass package. Prepare to die, ladies and gentlemen. It's main event time. Finish him! Yes! 
Thank you for thank you, Thor. All right, uh, gentlemen, y'all ready for this? Oh yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Creed two hits theaters this week, Ooh. so we ask. Mm. What classic 80s movie should get a new sequel focused on the main character's son? Okay, ooh, a lot of 80s, a lot of fun 80s movie to choose from. And we'll start with player number one, Joe Starr. I went with uh, Michael and Starr's kid from The Lost Boys, the Joel Schumacher weird uh, vampire classic. Just lots of weird uh, uh, Neverland, Peter Pan overtones. Lots of vampire boardwalk action. Um, <laughs> everything you want from an 80s vampire movie. Look, the 80s are big again. Um, everybody, everybody loves this stuff. Uh, uh, we've, got the, the, we've got the Amblin covered with Stranger Things. Now we need to get like the real weird uh, neon. Uh, every dude has like long rocker hair and like long earrings and denim vests with no sleeves. That's by definition a vest. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think you take uh, Michael and Star, who were uh, a couple in the original Lost Boys, and uh, they have a kid who moves back to that grandpa's house, and uh, and uh, sh she finds out that uh, when two people that were vampires for a minute have a kid, that kid ends up having some weird vampire stuff going on. Uh, you throw in Corey Feldman as uh, the Logan version of the Frog Brother, and uh, there you go, man. Lost Boys to but Lost Boy, singular. Lost All right. Boy. Just lost one Lost Boy. boy. <laughs> one Lost Boy, and it's a girl. L uh, lost, oh, lost, lost Boys girl. 2, colon, Lost, lost Boy. <laughs> lost and Girl. And then in parentheses, yeah. but it's a girl. Lost but it's a girl. <laughs> that is, yep, that's it. That's the whole pitch. I like it. Uh, Spencer Gilbert. I wrote with a more industry. streamlined title. It's uh, Coming From America. Um, look, oh. it's a lose-lose situation because if you pick a, a crappy 80s movie as Joe did, people are going to be like, why are you bringing that back? But if you pick a great 80s Son movie like Coming for America, people are like, oh, really? You're going to do better than that? But I think the Creed showed that you can take a revered classic, update it, and people will buy in if you can include you know, the people from the original, a little bit of buy-in from them, not a lot. Uh, and I have a whole movie pitch. Uh, it, it basically centers around... Um, uh, Prince Akeem's son has been raised in Los Angeles by uh, adopted parents. You don't know why he's not with his dad, uh, and he's he's been raised by like a like a Madonna and like a like a Brad Pitt who like adopted this African kid and like he's totally sheltered. He's like Jaden Smith basically, and he goes to he finds out he's a prince from uh, Arsenio Hall uh, on the streets, and he goes back to find his father. But it turns out that Eddie Murphy is kind of like like Idi Amin without the genocide. Like he's been deposed, so he's not he's like kind of hiding on the run. So you basically have Jaden Smith and his like <laughs> and his sibling, who's one of the uh, biological siblings he had, like a like a Jonah Hill type, on the road throughout Africa, going through barium mines, like going through the big cities, the. Uh, the wilderness, trying to find his dad, and it takes him all the way around the world, all the way back to Queens, where uh, Eddie Murphy is, is is living, and he finds out that his real family was with him all along. All right, uh, we got the pitch there for coming from America. Thank you, Spencer. Dan Merle. I'm going with a movie that's a little lesser known than these other two, but it is certainly an 80s classic to me and so many other people, mm. and that is the film The Wizard. <laughs> the Wizard, if you know, it was ah, uh, it's basically so bad. Nintendo so bad. the movie. It introduced the Power Glove. It introduced Super Mario Brothers 3. I want to see what is the next generation of The Wizard. You have this kid, Jimmy, who was the phenomenon of phenomenons uh, the, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's the singular. Uh, uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, he now has a kid. He's 17, 18 years old. Uh, but this kid now uh, it lives in such an advanced world. If you look at the end of The Wizard, that, that is Overwatch. Like, that tournament at the end of The Wizard is what is happening now in video games. So you have this kid, he's got this, like, this. his dad is like the the King of Kong of, of, of video games. He has to live up to that potential, he has to live up to that title in a world now where video gaming uh, is, a, is, a, is a spectator sport. And I think that it would uh, pay homage to the spirit of the original. Of course, you would have returning characters, Fred Savage, everybody coming back. But at the same time, it would tap into uh, what is popular today because that kind of event, uh, while uh, you know a big set piece in the original, is now what's happening in gaming, and I think it makes perfect sense to go back to this world and to do a follow up All to right. the wizard. We're getting totally 80s. Find it out. <laughs> well, Dan, I think that's you made a really good choice, but I feel like you got it 
backwards given the way gaming culture is. There's like no reverence for the past. No one, no one who plays Overwatch looks up to the best Donkey Kong Jr. player. Like they hate their parents, they hate old games. If it were the other way where it was Fred Savage, like I gotta have one last ride and go compete in this Overwatch tournament to impress my like dick son who's lost on like Xbox Live yelling slurs at people. Like that's a, that's a more interesting movie to me. No, that's the cliche. Me. No, that's the great thing about it though is this kid is a little snot nosed punk and he has no reverence for the past and that's what his dad has to teach him because it's not all about knowing the buttons and everything it's 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 love of the game it's love uh, of the I'm game I'm sorry the wizard was 100% about knowing the buttons how did he know where that flute was that was impossible to know ahead of time because no one knows things, the magic flute without reading a strategy guide in Nintendo Power because some things aren't taught Spencer some things are inside yourself you don't just and feel that's the what flute. the kid has that he felt that flute he felt the flute and he has to teach his kid how to have that same think, love it's not just about playing the game it's about what's inside I, your heart I question if there's any wonder around the world of gaming anymore like the wizard works because everyone was like oh my god Super Mario Brothers 3 now gaming culture like kind of sucks uh, well if they could use it, if they could use it to premiere I don't know halo pfft, uh, like people would go crazy the, the fart noise being whatever halo we're on like mm -hmm. I wanted to just be called <laughs> halo fart noise I think that'd be <laughs> a great game. you've all set up compelling reasons to why this will be an interesting story yes it's because things no have you had so an interesting story you and you fumbled to. it you no, fumbled you it on the decided what the interesting story is and I besides, disagree fundamentally my Jimmy, story's besides, more interesting Jimmy wasn't interested in video games he was interested in going back to California so he could put a photo of his dead sister in that big dinosaur. <laughs> so the, the crux of a, of, a, of a wizard movie should be uh, maybe the kids grown up in those big dinosaurs also, in California. You, you, First of all, you're both pitching your ideas of what you think it should be, and I disagree no, with no, both no, of No, no, I'm telling yours. you what the wizard was about. Let me tell you what yours is. Yours is, I don't know what yours is. It has 17 different subtitles, and you literally are just like, eh, it's, so it has a kid, but it's a boy, but, but it's I just want to do another cool vampire movie set on this Santa Cruz boardwalk that's ridiculous but, in the 80s, and a guy plays a sax, and I want to read Again, over. It. They're over, Joe. We're never going yeah, back. Yeah, better version of yours, though, is the whole point was that you had this new crew of young hot boys, and you pitched one girl. You need to have the next generation yeah, of got, young actors yeah, in there, and the, you pitched a movie yeah, about one your, person. Well, no, she, she's the kid. Sorry, I was specifying that the question was, who has a kid? They have the kid, but she has a whole new brat pack sort of surrounding her. I'm saying what the... the, the I don't think that was in your pitch until I The premise of the original <laughs> Wizard wasn't that the kid loved video games and was super into video games. He just happened to be good at him because... Uh, because he just he just was, but he was the all-time champion. He was the yeah, goat but that, that, of but that, video that games. That was like a side product of him trying to go to California. But that I doesn't change about, what he did. That doesn't change who he was and what he accomplished. I gotta hear a little more about these two movies. Yeah, where's well, where's Lucas? Uh, put a pin in that. Where's Lucas? <laughs> put, put second. Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> See, you're already interested. You want to know? No, no you didn't put I'm him not, in there. I'm, I'm not gonna sell you. I'm like a drug dealer, man. I'm giving you a hint of it. You gotta come see the movie. I think you want to know. He's I like think the Luke look, Skywalker of this movie. The He's Luke Skywalker in The Force Awakens. Where's uh -huh. Lucas? You're I think, gonna a, find I think, out. I think everyone sequel. wants to see Jaden Smith stuck in a barium mine being beaten to death for, for pennies a day. I Have think that is a recipe for comedy. Movie, Spencer. Have fun with the hot takes I coming out about your see that movie. movie. It's a classic it. fish out of water. <laughs> And then, okay, second part of my film, B story, is that the parents, they don't want the PR thing of like they lost their son, so they go on some patronizing like Pan-Africa music tour of like a Live Aid with like Madonna and Brad Pitt, go, <laughs> but they're secretly looking for their kid. This is comedy gold! This. This sounds really weird and depressing. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's way too far away, too, from coming to America. Like, this is like No, a, it's a like fish a, out of a, a guy from, uh, from, from wealth, from who's protected, coming from an unfamiliar place, looking to be, find royalty, but it's in a different uh, you're location. You're kind of doing Gods Must Be Crazy. Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing the same thing that every 80s and 90s movie did when they had a sequel. They were just like, let's do the first one, but reverse it. This time, Los, Australia's <laughs> coming to L.A., or L.A.'s coming to Australia, or whatever Crocodile Dundee. I, I think uh, I think with a second Lost Boys movie, uh, you can, there's a lot of commentary and nostalgia. Like there's been so many different weird vampire genres since then. You can sort of poke at all of those. I think you get a weird, cool redemption story with Joel Schumacher coming back to form and finally oh, absolving yeah, himself of sure Batman and Robin. Yeah, he'll really uh, bring yeah. all the nuance to this one. Um, yeah, he will. And a Corey. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right. bring You're them all just back. Just bringing everything back from the first movie and yeah. just saying it's going to be as good. That how that's many what, times that's that kind failed? of what, 
the, Creed did it. Creed did it well, but that's what Creed did. Creed and it's brought great. back one person from the previous film. And it brought back montages. It brought back trainers. It, br it brought back all the elements of the original film. It did it well. That in itself is not a critique of whether or not something like this could work. But I just don't see how yours is a commentary on anything. It just seems like a rehash of the Lost Boys. Uh, of uh, And we're so oversaturated with vampire stuff. Like it's it's too soon to bring back vampires. No, it's been a while. It's been a, it's been a couple <laughs> years since we twilighted. I think it's time to do some vampire stuff. Uh, we're, Joe, we're go ahead and roll this into your final thought. <laughs> Here. I think it, it, you can totally do some more fun, weird vampire stuff. There's never, there, there's, vampires have been around in pop culture forever for a reason. You the, you don't get sick of them. There's always a fun, new, weird take on vampires. I think nostalgia again is 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 super back with the '80s. Uh, except I don't want to do sort of like warm, fuzzy ET, the Amblin side of things that Stranger Things did. You want that weird like. Sexy, maybe everybody's in this weird vampire cave doing each other before they go see the oil guy play saxophone next to the barrels full of sparks again. Like that's 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 where I want to go back to that weird uh, '80s Santa Cruz, uh, and you sort of see it through fresh eyes. And um, I might be the only person that wants to see this movie, but I really just wanted to talk about the Lost Boys at length. Vampire Sex Cave, thank you, Joe. You're welcome. <laughs> Spencer, final thought. I just think that coming to America, there, there's something timeless about the story of like a fish out of water uh, who's who's maybe a little sheltered but has a good heart looking for love and the misunderstandings and happenstance of him and his best friend going on a journey to an unfamiliar place along the way. I think that just, yes, it is uh, just flipping it, but just flipping it actually lends it to a whole new situation, to a whole new time, uh, uh, time period of modern day and to a whole new location of like uh, all over the world, whereas uh, uh, which is a new take on an old classic. That's what you want. And Eddie Murphy will show up at the end, and it'll be sweet, and we'll all shed a tear. Thank you, Spencer. Dan Merle. Uh, my pitch is not just about reliving the 80s and uh, the Lost Boys, and it's not just taking the fish out of water concept. My pitch is about uh, taking the concept of the first movie, the characters from the first movie, and updating it for a new generation. This is a story about a son struggling to get out of the shadow of his father. It's a story about generations struggling to connect to each other. It's tied into video games. Video games are still relevant. They're relevant in a much different way than they were when the original was made. I don't think this is just going to be a retread or another comedy trope. This is going to be, I think, really an actually interesting update on the original film. It's going to hit the current thing for kids that like video games now. It's going to hit the nostalgia for people that liked this movie and like the old NES games, and I think it'd be a really fun and interesting movie, too. Thank you, Dan. Time. Booyah. Juan Harris, what do we got in the way of factuality? First of all, in Super Mario 3, it's called a warp whistle. Warp it's not whistle. a flute. Uh, it's it looks a like warp a flute. It's a whistle, everybody. Come on. It uh, makes a flute noise. It makes a flute. Yes, it makes a fluty kind of noise, but it's called a warp <laughs> whistle. Uh, in Crocodile Dundee 2, there were questions. We do return to Australia in that one. That's so right, he yeah. went to New York in the first one. He goes back to Australia in the second one to fight against the Colombian drug cartel. Which, yeah, uh, okay, all right, great. Dundee 2. Uh, that was all I had for facts, Can't although uh, one personal thing I would throw in. Uh, we did kind of have the long-earing denim vest 80s guy in Stranger Things, Billy Hargove in season two, mm. the bully. He's got the dangly earring vest thing going on. So that 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 sort of half fact. Oh, I hated him so much. Gotcha. Uh, Lon, <laughs> go ahead and uh, roll this into your uh, thoughts on this. Uh, as much uh, as I enjoyed the creativity of Joe's Lost Boys 2 colon Lost Boy colon It's a Lost Girl pitch, <laughs> ultimately this came down to uh, Dan versus Spencer for me. Uh, I really I really liked Spencer's pitch, although the line that Prince Akeem is now like Idi Amin, maybe Without little, the genocide, that was an far. important caveat. Pull, I, I, I Just, still, I meant a deposed king. I That's still want to like him, but I did like the idea of traveling around the world with, you know, like with his friends sort of looking for him. But ultimately, I thought Dan just did a really good job of taking what worked about the wizard, bringing it into a modern context where it's still super relevant. I would like to hear what the modern version of I Love the Power Glove, It's So Bad would be. VR? Maybe, but I'm going with Dan. Boom, uh, that's uh, one for Dan. Uh, yeah, the, uh, I, I love the oiled up uh, saxophone guy. I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> and my vote is going for Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm glad you brought him up. But yeah, it also came down for uh, Spencer and uh, Dan for me. And I don't know, I felt like they, uh, they, uh, 
Joe and Spencer effectively uh, like started like hammering uh, like Dan's idea, and it, it wasn't quite fair because it was like a real gang up. Yeah, but just, like that, just we double teaming like, them like two vampires under a boardwalk. <laughs> Wait, now I'm coming back this way a little bit. Uh, but yeah, just what was it? What just questioning the angle, questioning a lot about it, and I didn't hear a ton. And for me, Spencer had the tightest. Uh, a to B uh, trajectory of his movie. So uh, I'm going with coming from America, even though I wasn't sure about Jaden Smith in a barium mine. A Jaden Smith type. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a but, media mean type. These are all just <laughs> speculative. Yeah. Uh, Dan, had a lo- Dan had a lot of compelling uh, elements, but just uh, Spencer's pitch seemed most airtight to me. So we're sending it to Danielle Radford. Um, so here's the thing. You can say Jaden Smith type all you want. It would be Jaden Smith. <laughs> nah. like he's getting cast in that movie. But he's getting cast in that movie if he decides that he wants to be cast in movies. Plus, he'd get to rap. I mean, Ooh, so, yeah. um, yeah, these were all very strong arguments. I do wish I would have heard more, of, as much as I enjoyed, hold on, look at my notes, <laughs> um, as much as I enjoyed... Um, nostalgia is back, but don't do the fuzzy side. Maybe they're boning. Sorry, that was my note. Um, <laughs> as, as much as I enjoyed that, I do wish I would have gotten to hear more um, from Joe about his pitch. Um, it's a PG show, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to fill in the, yeah. the fill dirty in, parts. I uh, just have to fill in the blanks. Um, <laughs> Dan's, Dan's pitch was also very good. Um, I, I, that's another one where I feel like there were arguments about... Um, Joe brought up really good points about how that wasn't at the center of the movie, and then Dan did have some really good um, counter-arguments to that, but I do have to say, just as a solid pitch for a movie, and with some of the best comebacks about it, I had to go with Spencer, too. Mm. Boom. <laughs> Spencer takes Eat round number one. Well, fun, right. gentlemen. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, have fun. Well I'm fighting that battle. I, <laughs> I just want to make a fun movie about video games. I'm not going to bury a mine. I just want to make a fun movie about Pan African contemporary like politics. Beetlejuice. <laughs> you just what? kind uh, of did your Beetlejuice impression. Oh, uh, uh, fun, fun, alternate uh, uh, hey, yeah, I just want to play video games. Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, because nothing's politically fraught about video games these days. No one knows about that. Get off the headset, you little twerp. Just, just to add uh, Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice to another to a list of uh, Dan's very good impressions. I should have put Beetlejuice in the movie. Yeah. Um, now I know. By the way, Spencer, alternate title for your movie: The Next King of Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, uh, so it's 1-0, Spencer. Um, our buddies Dan and Joe looking to get on the board. Question number two. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, hope, you're eat- <laughs> hope you're eating some pie and, and some uh, mashed potatoes and all that good stuff. We ask, what movie character's house would you most want to go to Thanksgiving dinner for? Ooh. What movie character's house would you most, most want to go to to enjoy some Thanksgiving dinner? Dinner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pennywise. <laughs> Down in the um, sewer. <laughs> yeah. Dinner floats too. Okay. Uh, it's question two. We start with player two, Spencer. All right. Um, I want to go to a place that I didn't want to leave uh, when I saw it on film, and that was at the end of Chef, and that is the home of uh, uh, John Favreau's character. I believe his name's Carl, um, uh, and uh, his son and his. Reunited uh, wife uh, Sofia Vergara, as they are serving up a big meal to the whole, uh, to friends and family, um, delicious food. Uh, her dad is like in a, a like a Latin jazz band, like they're playing. It's comfortable. It's like indoor outdoor in Miami. I mean, you want food, you want friends, you want family. Not just the Olive Garden, but at my <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right, uh, Carl, John Favreau's house from Chef. Thank you, Spencer, Dan Merle. I like. Uh, I, I'm a traditionalist. I like Thanksgiving food. I like the. Uh, I like the family atmosphere. I like. The I heard you only atmosphere. like three kinds of food. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey and bread, please. No seasoning. Okay. I was being a little obtuse for the sense, sense of humor. I like more than just. I three take things things. literally. Okay, keep going. Uh, so I'm going with uh, Steve Martin from Plane, Trains, and Automobiles. First of all. 
just looking at what he went through to get home for Thanksgiving, it is obvious that it is a loving family. It is a very nice house. We've seen that much. Uh, they're talking about the food. They're talking about the atmosphere. They're talking about the family. Uh, the entire movie is about that, about getting home. Plus, it's a place that I know I'm welcome. That's the wonderful, that's the best moment in that movie is, is when he uh, brings John Candy into his home and welcomes him to his table. That's the kind of atmosphere I want for Thanksgiving, Hal. That's what Thanksgiving is all about, and that's where I would want to go. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Steve Martin's house from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, one of the great Thanksgiving movies of all time. Uh, Joe Starr. Hal, I went with an answer so obvious, I can't believe I'm the only one that pitched it. And that is the Merry Men's Treehouse Fortress from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. <laughs> oh, yum, look what's on wow. the menu. A little on the nose, Joe, don't you think? <laughs> look, not only is the meal going to be good, because it's going to be fresh meat that just got shot and it's being cooked over a fire right in front of you. Uh, instead of what coming, kind of meat? Uh, uh, it could be boar, it could be wild. Wild turkey. It could be all sorts of yeah, like right. you know. People ate before Thanksgiving happened. True. Uh, they ate all sorts of foods. Uh, so your, your food's gonna be awesome. Uh, uh, you're gonna instead of uh, someone uh, buying a last minute uh, five dollar bottle of wine from Seven Eleven on the way to your house. Like there's just gonna be like straight up mead from Fire Tuck passed around in a jar. Uh, <laughs> uh, you get to hang out and eat by fire pits. It's super comfy. It's super fun. Uh, and then afterwards, there's all sorts of activities. Someone could teach you how to shoot arrows, you can zip line around, uh, uh, you can take some very nice hikes, uh, that weird place where they had the quarterstaff fight, that little river, that's a very pretty place to go have a walk after a nice Thanksgiving meal. Uh, I'm going for the for the full package uh, with a whole bunch of merry men, people happy enough to identify specifically as merry. Uh, Robin Hood's Merry Men Treehouse Fortress <laughs> from Robin Hood. <laughs> Great, and I would just like to clarify, this is Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, not Taron Egerton's or Russell Crowe's Robin Hood. Oh yeah, yes. I'm talking about the only Robin Hood that's not also an animated fox that matters. Okay, mm. uh, there we go, Kevin Costner's well Robin played, Hood, well Prince played. of Thieves, uh, Treehouse Fortress. Uh, fight it out, y'all. My problem with Joe's pick <laughs> is, not only uh, will they not be serving a tr Thanksgiving food there, uh, because okay. it predates Thanksgiving. That's okay, uh, I've, do I've, done, I've done turkey plenty of times. The mm. last thing, I, the last thing that I want to do uh, on my Thanksgiving day is playing uh, history spoiler alert with a bunch of homeless Englishmen. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to explain what this, what is this crazy concept that you have? What is this holiday? Sure. It's like, well, listen, some shit's gonna go down. I'll even uh, grant you that Thanksgiving exists in this land and yeah, time. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, say they, you taught them all Thanksgiving ahead of time. I don't want to be having Thanksgiving looking over my shoulder that the fuzz is gonna bust it up any second. They're gonna <laughs> okay. have to grab our pelts and run. <laughs> Into the forest, they hither and up, thither. They showed up one time. Weird <laughs> shit can happen at anybody's house. It can happen at his house. It can happen at Steve Martin's house. Look at all the weird bad luck that followed they're Steve Martin. They're not vagabonds home. Uh, 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 huddling from the law, like in, in our Oh, choices. they're not huddling. They're very comfortably living in a very, very cool treehouse region. And, you know, if, 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 I'm, I'm not worried about the fuzz deep breaking in up the dinner. beautiful Sherwood Forest. I'm worried about the fuzz that's still going to be on the dinner. I don't want stewed <laughs> rabbits that was like, oh, did Will Scarlet catch? anything today? I'm no? Not well, take no dinner menu. today. Sorry. I'm not taking menu criticism from a guy that eats three foods at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, Joe, rabbit. I really need to explain. Awesome. I really need to explain exaggeration for the sake of humor to you. Uh, <laughs> I do think that food should be the first consideration because family, yes. you know, it's all give or take. And why not go with a professional chef who can dress things up, he can dress things down. His whole family cooks. They all have a great appreciation for it. They just got back from that awesome road trip, probably picked up some cool recipes. You have some great sides, some great firsts. You know, these are chefs, they're professional entertainers will, for a living. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why specifically for Thanksgiving, I'm not gonna go with your choice. It is because I think that, I, I as I said, I'm a traditionalist, and, sure. and I feel like this is where our two, our two uh, geographical upbringings, because uh, I found that in California, and people from California, Thanksgiving is kind of more based around any kind of food. It's, it's a little more How dare you, broadly sir. based. My Thanksgiving is as plain as the day is long. Okay, yeah, but that makes well, then that's the problem then, because the one thing I about say John Favreau is, uh, but that, that Thanksgiving is going to be all these chefs sort of like trying to outdo each other. Oh, who would want get... chefs trying to outdo each other for Thanksgiving? I want, I want, I want my basic. I want my good Thanksgiving, like just 
well cooked meat basics. I don't want a bunch of guys ruining things. But this uh, is my main thing with John Favreau in, in particular is the whole movie. The reason that he goes on this trip is is predicated on the fact that he can't do the classics. He wants to go do other stuff, and every time he tries to do the classics, that's they're not like, why oh, he I goes. Like he goes it. to rediscover his passion for food and find people like cooking from their hearts and at their roots, and that's what he comes back with. But He's he doesn't do want to do the normal thing. He wants to go do the weird, crazy. He thing, makes cubanos. That's like ham and cheese sandwiches. He's but not that's doing not what craziness. I want, but, but he doesn't want to go by the formula. He wants to like experiment, and like I appreciate that in a chef, but that's not what I want for Thanksgiving. Like I want the I want the the, the tradition, the Thanksgiving tradition, and that's what you're gonna get with my choice. You're going to get a great meal, you're going to get good family, and a welcoming atmosphere. I don't know about that family. I hate to bring this up, but when they come home <laughs> at the end, that family is old and weird looking, and their little boy oh, is, little in is in culottes and a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of like stilted conversation you're going to have when the little boy is wearing culottes, and he looks like Oliver Twist, and, the, and everyone in there, everyone else aside from his wife is over 70. You're you all going to just be like, please, sir, may I have another bean? You yes, judgmental <laughs> Bastard, Spencer. <laughs> this is a family that brought in a man. They Literally, didn't bring him in. He brought him in after he wore him down psychologically they over two hours. They welcomed him with <laughs> open arms. They welcomed him with the open arms did. to their table. Is that not what Thanksgiving is about? Is about finding people and welcoming to them to your table? That's what the entire holiday is predicated on. Did they about. welcome him with open arms or were they afraid of an angry patriarch who's been shown to have a short temper and to not welcome in guests at first sight? He had to have a whole hero's <laughs> journey to find <laughs> out that people, that strangers were worth trusting and were worth Bring in. This is clearly the first time he's ever done you this. You are the most cynical man in the world. Look I, at the I, love. I was, Look I, at the love. I in watched that house. the beginning of the movie and the end. The love is there at the end. It's not there at the beginning. <laughs> Steve Martin learns to love. That's yeah, the and the whole, whole family's there. Like, going. I hope Dad doesn't come home soon. <laughs> They're really no, like that. The I better wear the culottes he likes me to wear. You are so misreading that movie. It is about love and acceptance. That's what the whole message is. He has is in the to movie. learn love and acceptance. And he doesn't have any. He did, and he's welcoming <laughs> into his house. You're taking. You're taking the Steve Martin. At the beginning of the movie and saying he's yes. like that at the end, and he's not. The he's whole the product movie of, is about him learning to welcome he's people. He's the product of his family environment. <laughs> at Which the is where <laughs> you're bringing people into. He needs to get home so bad because he's just stressed out about the whole thing because he knows he's going to go home and his weird culotte kid's going to be a brat because they ate late. You um, are the most sick. <laughs> this is a guy who works hard, who wants nothing more than to go home to his family, to the place where he is loved, to a house of love and warmth, and you're both bringing the most cynical thing possible. This is about warmth and understanding. It's not about hanging out with hobos in the forest, and it's not about a chef saying, like, I, I, just, I put avocado on the turkey, and I smeared it on a Kaiser roll. <laughs> oh, you wanted yams? Sorry, I don't do that. They're boring. I'm with you on that. I'm I don't want that. That menu's gonna suck. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. You're oh, gonna, it's gonna be the worst. I want Steve a Martin, hearth. But, I want a family. You're gonna have whole yeah. side of Chicago, uh, unseasoned, unflavored. Like, they're probably gonna do it out of a package, and it's gonna be very, very plain and you are lead us. Some of those packages. Spencer, are <laughs> I'm going to ask you to give us your final thoughts and, and paint us a look. I'm going to ask each of you in your final thoughts to paint us a lovely Thanksgiving picture. Look, I want to have fun. I want friends. I want music. I want a little bit of liveliness and uh, in my Thanksgiving. It, it's a celebration. It's a celebration of family. And it's a celebration of food, most of all. And these are all people who love each other and they love food. I just don't. And it's in a nice Miami climate. Like, who doesn't want to be, uh, you know, in a T-shirt and shorts for Thanksgiving? Uh, it, yeah, you're all you all moved to California. So <laughs> zip that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I, I just think it's, it's got everything you want. Uh, and, and yes, I like my Thanksgiving with a little bit of Spice, I'm not going to apologize for it. Typical right. California elitism, thinking we all moved here for the climate. <laughs> no, Spencer, we didn't. Some of us had other motivations. They still have Thanksgiving in Arkansas and Kentucky. You guys want to wheel on back. You want to <laughs> you wanna buy my plane ticket, Spencer? I'll take the money. Yes, please. Thank you. And the reason that I would like to go home for that is because that's what I love about Thanksgiving. I love the welcoming atmosphere. I love the love about it. I love the fact, the spirit of the holiday. And that's one of the great things that actually happens in L.A. is so so many people get together and welcome people that don't have anywhere else to go, that come into their home for the holiday. That's the kind of place that I want to spend Thanksgiving in particular. Not a place that just has nice food, not a tree for sure, uh, but a place that knows what the, what the holiday is about, a place that is going to welcome you with open arms, and that's why this is where you want to go. This place represents the spirit of the holiday. Thank you, Dan. Joe Star. <clears throat> 
So, uh, finally, I, I don't want to go somewhere uh, that's just, you say it's just going to be about the food and you want a little bit of spice, but I feel like in, in this, the, this competitive chef situation is going to be like when you go to a wedding reception and they're like, we got the finest uh, vegan chef in Berkeley to cook all the food, and everyone's kind of just like picking through their plate and trying to find it, and then you go get a slice of pizza uh, when no one's looking, and I just don't think that's going to be a very fun Thanksgiving. I'll grant you, you're going to have a very nice Thanksgiving, uh, but I, I, want, I want that little bit of extra, because I can go have that nice Thanksgiving just like at my parents' house, but when we're given the option of you can go have uh, this, a Thanksgiving day with any movie character, I want to do something I'm going to remember. I want something that's a little crazy, a little crazier, a little more memorable. Uh, you guys talked about having friends, music, love, and food, and those are all things that happen. Plus, you're in a cool forest in a cool treehouse, uh, eating venison over the fire and like fresh oh. roasted vegetables. Gamey. Um, <laughs> not a prepare, not a prepare well. Um, venison's good. Sorry. Um, uh, cooking uh, fresh rabbit. Not a bunch of store bought stuff. This is this is legit fresh organic. <laughs> food like that's gonna be really really awesome food that uh, you know the Favros and stuff with all of their skill and talent aren't gonna be able to prepare plus there's just gonna be fun stuff to do there's cool people there and uh, it's a whole community of people coming together uh, for one really big fun Thanksgiving festival and just to answer that final knock of maybe the sheriff of Nottingham's <laughs> people show up and maybe they start trying to raise the village maybe <laughs> allegedly I'll say this, Hal. <laughs> yes, Joe. I'm getting old. And uh, all these holidays are starting to bleed together. And uh, that's depressing to me. And the uh, Thanksgiving that I will not forget is the one when Morgan Freeman throws me a scimitar because we have to go to defend the kids' table uh, at Thanksgiving. That's going to be an awesome one uh, that I'm not going to forget when Morgan Freeman's just like, Christian, come on! And then I uh, follow him in, into battle uh, right before we have a lovely dessert. Joe Starr pitching an All unforgettable right. Thanksgiving. Ding, ding, ding. All right, time. Uh, wow. Uh, all sorts of uh, three very different Thanksgivings. Lon Harris, uh, where are we at with the facts? Uh, John Favreau plays a character named Carl Casper in Chef, so you're correct. His name is Carl. Steve Martin, by the way, for the record, Neil Page is his character in Plates, and Automobiles. Mm -hmm. The only real fact I had to check, the fauna common to Sherwood Forest. You've got rabbit. You've got vole, which are small rodents, mm. hedgehogs, stoats, weasels, foxes, Yum. badgers, bats, and fallow deer, which are small deer, but edible. So you, you could maybe make, make your, it all taste awesome. your rabbit stew and your venison could theoretically work. Yeah, um, Hassenpfeffer. Hassenpfeffer is a rabbit dish that I learned about oh. by watching Bugs Bunny. Hassenpfeffer. Hassenpfeffer, yeah. Um, so you could make up a Hassenpfeffer, a fricassee. Or whip up a Hassenpfeffer. <laughs> that was great with vole. Yeah, yeah. yeah vole. <laughs> Enjoy your vole. In this movie, there are big deer in that forest. That's why a kid gets arrested. Because mm. he's shooting a big the old deer. Killing yeah. the king's deer. Correct. Yeah. Noted. Daniel Radford. <laughs> okay. Um, I have so many notes, and none of them make sense. So... <laughs> All of these were uh, obviously <laughs> really good arguments. Um, I, you know, at first I was kind of downplaying Joe's, but Joe had that really great moment where he said, like, if I want something traditional, <laughs> I can go home. Um, if I want something memorable, then that's why I'm going to this. And I thought that that was a really, really compelling argument. Spencer, I'm sorry, but they're right. Chef's food is going to make me angry. I just want greens, my dude. <laughs> I, just, I want my mom's greens. <laughs> and, like, and I appreciate that Chef is probably going to do something very interesting with pears, but I don't need to eat it. Um, so this was really between Joe, um, <laughs> between Joe and Dan for me. And... Um, yeah, I gotta say, I loved all of the things about tradition, it being so warm and welcoming and home. But Joe's right, if I want home, I'm going back to Seattle. So I have to go wow. with the Merry Men. Okay, 1-0 okay. <laughs> for the Merry Men. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I agree and disagree somewhat with uh, a, a lot of your points, uh, Danielle. Um, I was... I was I pushed my chips into the middle of the table for Spencer uh, real quick, but then uh, I, I started to be like, uh, dealer, uh, hold that thought. He's like, man, they kept dinging you, and that like just, I, man, I just started thinking about just weird concoctions that made Thanksgiving unfortunate. You saw the movie, right? Did you want to eat everything? Yeah. Oh, and then uh, Dan had a good point. He got 
uh, uh, railroaded by the food critic. He got a bad review because he did not want to cook traditional. Uh, so, yeah, it was a combination of those things. They, they really knocked you out of contention for me. Joe, you came up hard at the end with that memorable Thanksgiving stuff because how many do you have? But at the end of the day... <laughs> Um, Dan just painted this uh, bucolic picture of home. And the question is, what movie character's house would you most want to go to for Thanksgiving dinner? And um, that atmosphere of love and acceptance, they accepted an unkempt lout who in the airport, <laughs> when Steve Martin met him, he was reading a pornography <laughs> novel called The Canadian Mounted. <laughs> Check that out. That is the name of the book. He was reading. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I go with Dan Merle on this one. So Whoa. we're sending it to Lon Harris. Oh, wow. Tough, tough call. I was also between Joe and Dan because I kind of agree. Like, ah, it, would, it, it feels a little pretentious to me, like hanging out with the <laughs> chefs on Thanksgiving. I'm not, I'm not sure I was going to do it. So I was between Joe and Dan. And I have to say, I was leaning towards Dan the whole time, but I thought Joe had a very effective final rebuttal. Uh, I agree that. The, the appeal of Neil Page's house at the end of Plains Trades isn't that it's the greatest Thanksgiving ever, it's it's somewhere to go. He was gonna be alone, now he has a chance to be with someone, but if I have my choice of where to go, I think Joe made a very strong case for why Sherwood Forest <laughs> would be a fun Thanksgiving. I'm going Joe Starr. Wow. Wow, wow. Joe wow. Starr, Thanksgiving in a, in a tree house. <laughs> I work with this heartless, heartless it people. Is <laughs> I, you know what, you, you, you made it, you, you pierced this dark heart. <laughs> I just um, accidentally but, stabbed my leg with a pen. <laughs> Get ready for more of that and yeah. share one for yeah. yeah. it. I, oh, I also really enjoy the Joe went from Lost Boys to Merry Men. Yeah. I'm hoping we can keep in the theme of oh, yeah. another yeah. gang of dudes oh, yeah, in round yeah, yeah. three. I'm yeah. picking yeah. the arrowhead out of your venison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we still I'll remember. Eat, I'm nice to cloak and no one's gonna judge me. Fire <laughs> while you're freezing to death, biting into bone and tendon. Well, I was waiting for someone to say how bitter cold it was gonna be, yeah. but yeah. nobody uh, said yeah, it. Yeah, November, right. and, uh, November and uh, well, yeah. he brought up a cozy it, fire. Have to base it on All the All right. Uh, so uh, Joe takes it with Thanksgiving in the woods. So uh, it is also the title of my one man play. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is one for Joe, one for Spencer, Dan, looking mm. to. Get on the board and whoa! Katie bar the door. It's a blind fight. <laughs> what? Hoot, hoot. Percival, what do you think about the blind fight? I'm excited. All right. So <laughs> Again, um, never see the lips move. <laughs> <laughs> we recently cleaned out the Screen Junkies toy closet and we came upon a bootleg Universal Hero action figure set. Oh, oh no. Okay. Which okay. I'm, uh, stepping out yeah. to get. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe show the people at home. What kids yeah. don't want to play <laughs> Universal <laughs> Hero? Sure of it. So, oh my fellas, God. Take a look at this. Oh my this God. is like <laughs> Avengers knockoff yeah. extraordinaire. Uh huh. Oh my God. Okay. Who are the Avengers, Hal? These are the Universal yes, Heroes. The Universal Heroes. <laughs> oh my God, I want it so bad. I wow. love bootleg toys so much. Yeah. Does he like, oh, look at those. Oh, his, eyes, his eyes light up when you push Whoa. his navel. <laughs> oh, can, 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 uh, can you show the people? I do. I don't know if they can see this, but. Oh, here, let me. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. So, okay, no our blind <laughs> fight is asking you three great minds to create and pitch the Universal Hero movie. Mm. Pitch the Universal Hero movie, and Daniel Radford, Lon Harris, and myself are the studio execs and the people out there. Let us know in the comments. They don't have names. Like. All right. Okay. They they don't have names. No. You, supply the names. you supply the names. You supply the names. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, so the audience will just know who we're talking about. All right. And uh, Dan, mm -hmm. if everybody as you're pitching, you want to uh, have that in, maybe in front of you. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Well. Great. All right, Dan, you're player number three. This is question number three. You are first up, my man. Okay. So this is the Universal Hero movie. This is called uh, Team of Might. Is the name of my film, starring these Universal Hero figures, Team of Might. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is uh, 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 Flashman. Flashman. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's not fast. That's the twist. That's oh. what keeps him from being completely uh, uh, derivative. Uh, his name is Flashman, and uh, he can actually, he's just a quick thinker. He's a quick thinker, he can mm -hmm. solve problem, any problem. Uh, they all go to the same um, uh, tailor, that's why all their costumes <laughs> look the same. Uh, this is uh, Captain Might, 
Captain Might. He's actually from the UK. These are not the American Stars oh. and Stripes. This is the British. Uh, these are the British colors. Union Jack. Mm. Yeah, Union Jack. Sure. Um, <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, uh, Scorpion Wing right here. That's Ooh. Scorpion Wing. Uh, he can fly. He's also a demon, which is uh, explains the light up eyes. Oh. So that's Scorpion Wing there. Uh, this guy is really cool. He lives on. He, he it looks like he would not live underwater, but he does. This is uh, the seahorse. <laughs> <laughs> he can zip through water faster than you can ever imagine, and he mates for life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he mates for life. It's like a seahorse. <laughs> Wait, the others don't mate for life. No, they're okay. very. They're a very polyamorous uh, bunch. And then this is. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so what is this? Oh yeah, this guy. Uh, this guy is uh, Sense of Justice. That's his name. Sure. Sense of Justice. He's got a good sense of it. He's got a good sense of justice. Uh, he's the moral center. <laughs> he's the moral center of the group. And uh, really, they're, they're a ragtag bunch of people, uh, and they're clones. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. They do look, That's the they twist. look very uh, similar. Spoiler alert. That's the twist. And Ooh. they're clones, and they fight crime uh, in uh, Japan. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Team of Mike. I mean, I have Mike. more. I have more, obviously. Gotcha. Yeah, I need to right. give you the broad strokes. Right, back around to Joe. Oh, okay. A Got ragtag it. bunch of clones that fight crime in Japan. Okay, um, so uh, the first couple things that sort of stand out to me here is everyone looks, uh, you know, the same. Obviously, these are different repaints on different characters. There's some weird tech you. stuff. There's some bat stuff. So here we go. Universal Heroes. Um, decades ago, uh, the world's greatest hero was uh, basically a tech guy, tech hero that's like an amalgam of Batman and Iron Man, and he loses. Uh, evil wins, evil controls the world, uh, it's very, very, very dark, grim future, until a group of cool teens with attitude find <laughs> his cave, uh, the, the Batman Iron Man guy's cave, and find all of his crap, and uh, uh, instead of one guy just using very specific uh, armor for very specific situations like oh I have to go to a winter place time to put on Arctic attack Batman clothes uh, They just use all of his stuff and sort of throw it all together as big amalgams one of them's got bat wings one of them's got a Cicada head that he <laughs> throws at people uh, this guy's blue and um, hmm. This guy has a big sword and that looks like it turns into a demon dog uh, so he was a very occult guy, apparently, too. Uh, but that, that's the, 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 these kids find all this stuff and they, they fight evil with it. Mm. Spencer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gosh. Uh, okay. So, the Universal Heroes. Um, this takes place... Uh, look, if Deadpool can say DCEU, can they say Avengers? Can we say that they? this is a non-canonical MCU movie? We won't re refer to them by name. We'll just say, like, those heroes or the Revengers, if you need to come up with, like, a facsimile of them. Mm -hmm. These are the cast-offs. These are the heroes that you uh, that are basically like the heroes of Reseda. Like, they're, <laughs> the Avengers take care of, like, South Korea, and uh, when Seoul is under attack, or the entire universe, or mm -hmm. Sokovia, the universal heroes are just kind of the <laughs> uh, the Kroger brand. Uh, they're a little little janky in their equipment. Uh, they all have to clearly share the same suit. <laughs> that They just kind of dye different colors. Uh, they're, they're the ne'er-do-wells, and they're overlooked, and they get bullied by other superheroes, like the, uh, the Avengers or similar. Uh, are like uh, you, we'll take care of this one, Universal Heroes. Like this isn't a this isn't a speeding ticket. We're trying to save the world. But in their hubris, perhaps because of a snap, perhaps because of uh, you know a, an invention of their own creation, all the biggest heroes die, and the government's like, who do we got? And it's like the bad news bears of superheroes, the universal knockoff, falling apart heroes. But they got a lot of heart, and they got uh, a lot of junk that they can strap together to <laughs> form larger junk. Uh, and they are forced to step it up because they have the real humility and the real strength of resolve that uh, that the big time heroes lost by being so popular in uh, our comic obsessed uh, days. Gotcha. And uh, to question for Spencer: Are you saying that this is part? Are you, are you positing that these guys in your movie are part of the MCU? Look, if we can get the rights, great. Probably not. So otherwise let's we're just, just winking. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just saying like the, the the you know uh, 
F.E. Man and like uh, y- you know Cat Boy or Su- no, 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 Man. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fight it out, everybody. Well, I, we've trodden this ground before. You're, we've we've made this series already. Uh, it was called Interns of Field, and it was not particularly well received. So I wonder <laughs> if your movie's going to be as successful this as you think. Has it has several is. key differences. Uh, one, money. Uh, <laughs> two, not behind a paywall. Three, uh, uh, this is uh, yeah, this is a film. This is this. Doesn't have the pitfalls of a pilot and a, and a series that mm-hmm. you have to uh, get people on board right away. This has time to develop and time to create a world that people want to be well, in. Well, the app that this is available on work. No. Okay. <laughs> no, that's, oh, a, that's a problem. We're keeping that from We're Screen Junkies. That. Okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, that's good. I mean, it sounds kind of like Mystery Men. I feel like we've seen bit. this movie yeah. before. Bit. With Mystery Men, like the heroes are out of commission and you've got the B team, and, and yours is basically Power Rangers. Heck yeah, and this man. This is what I love about Team of Might. Is it, <laughs> it may seem derivative, but the scene when Sense of Justice is being, uh, when his sense of justice is being tested <laughs> by, by my supervillain. Uh, and he's the moral center of this team. You're really going to care about these guys. Uh, uh, they overcome their obstacles. They have so many things going against them. Uh, Seahorse, as I mentioned, who mates for life, falls in love with the wrong with the supervillain, and you can imagine how distressing that would be because again, life. his inclination is to mate for life. Mm. There are many different ways that you can go with my super team. They all fit together. They don't fit together. You, you're fantastic beast tooing it, where like there's five different stories going on at the same time. I'm missing like. The overarching thing. You got one like non-consensual seahorse relationship. You got oh, one like I did not say that. Uh, oh, well, my. it's a it's a it's complicated, villain. It's not a, non-consensual. It's a villain that doesn't want to be with the seahorse, and he's going after. No, it's the opposite. The seahorse. You're not listening. Can I, I hear a little more about your villain? <laughs> my villain? Yeah. Yeah. The villain is uh, Captain Wrong. Mm. And <laughs> Captain well, of Wrong. Of course, Captain Wrong's wrong. That doesn't take a sense of justice well, to figure out. That's the tragedy of it. You'd be surprised. surprised you don't notice these things until they're too late. Uh, Doctor <laughs> Evil got a degree, but and people didn't seem to catch on until later for mm, him either. That's fair. Uh, mm. it's, it's, sometimes you're just born with a, a, pr- a proper surname. It happens. Uh, but but I, I, I'm really aiming to create something original here. I, I don't want to be derivative of anything else. I realize that perhaps you look at you look at this package and you look at these faces and you're like, oh, I know where this is going. You don't know where this is going. Uh, Captain Might, I think particularly, I've got a great arc for him in the first film that could, that could set up his own solo movie. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be too much going on because I'm very self-assured in what these characters are, who their identities are, and 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 that's the thing. It's not having too many stories going on at once. It's not having confidence in those stories. I'm very confident that these five characters are strong enough to sustain It's going to freeze own. for one second. I'm going to throw something at you guys. I'm going to ask that you guys uh, give me the title of your film and then the tagline, like this summer you won't know what hit you, or uh, in space no one can hear you scream, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, so I want you to give us the title of your film Film and the tagline, and uh, yeah, give it to us with a little bit of a little bit of hot sauce on it. Give us some pizzazz. Um, all right, uh, Dan. Uh, oh, okay. great! I get to improv first again. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, let's. let's no, I got you. Okay, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Star. It's, just, uh, it's right. just the future is universal. Universal heroes, and then uh, you see the silhouette of a giant robot forming, and great. it punches a castle. Oh, so it's like uh, Power Rangers and Voltron? Yeah, I'm doing so many derivative things and I'm really, really excited about it, nice. honestly. Like, cool. I, I think it's gonna be really, really good. Uh, yeah, mine's Universal Heroes. Um, uh, uh, oh God, what was it? It's like Universal Heroes, 90% effective, 100% authentic. <laughs> mm. Okay, great, <laughs> thanks Spence. Dan? I think that you can do a lot of different marketing strategies. The Buffalo uh, Wild Wings I, I think the mo- <laughs> I think the more traditional way would be, you know, uh, uh, Team of Might, um, uh, Heroes, uh, Universal Heroes, Heroes for the Universe, I think is one thing that's the more thing, but I think you could go into the more uh, into the, the, the the more modern market, uh, go for the viral market, and it'd be like, are they heroes? Are they Bitch, dancers? They might be. <laughs> Uh, oh. You could go. You could go to the. You know, the, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mike, you can go back. any number. Of that. Shared universe. Uh, oh. uh, you can go any number of ways, uh, and this is what I also love: is is you're going to hit a lot of different camps with this movie. This is a four quadrant uh, picture that you can market <laughs> to a lot of different audiences. Sure. Uh, great, great, great. Uh, anything else to add, you guys? 
Yeah, I'll say yes. uh, uh, to the response. All right, go ahead. Let's have a final thought. We'll yeah, to the to thoughts. the critique that uh, a group of ragtag superheroes taking over for uh, for a, a cocky uh, original guard is, is something that's been done not just in Mystery Men but in uh, Watchmen, and it's been done effectively. And both of those movies were movies that came out before their time. I feel like now people understand so much about the superhero tropes and have seen the superheroes literally get big heads and become too big for maybe what the movies uh, uh, started out as. That it's time for uh, the for our bad news bears, but with superheroes. Thank you, Spence. Dan, I would I would argue that Watchmen probably didn't come out before any. T- I, I I revisited Watchmen and it's I'm I'm about the same on it. Uh, but even the idea of a bad news bears, but for superheroes, they, they had that movie The Losers, which was sort of the, the like it was based on a comic book. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. It's it's I get it that you know perhaps those films were underappreciated, but I don't think they changed the fundamental thing of like this concept has been done before. Whereas what I am pitching is a completely new team of original superheroes. I promise you, you've never seen anyone like Seahorse in a superhero <laughs> film. Before. Before. And isn't that what we're looking for? Innovation, uh, a, a, a unique look and a unique take. And I feel like we've seen Spencer's take before. And Joe's just kind of seems to be, we just got a Power Rangers movie. You even use teenagers with attitude to go into a cave mm-hmm. and discover mm-hmm. a thing. We mm-hmm. just we just saw that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like mm-hmm. my take is, is really, it may, it may be unconventional, but it's original. And I think that's what people are looking for. Thank you, Dan. Joe Stark. Hal, I'll add Great Lake Avengers to the pile of things that Spencer's sounds like. There's just, uh, you know, just a lot, a lot. I've seen, I've seen that story a whole bunch. Um, <laughs> what happened? And I, I question, <laughs> I question Dan's uh, decision to uh, uh, really work on focusing on character and arcs. Uh, for for this giant, uh, big, ridiculous uh, universal hero movie, people people going to see popcorn movies. They don't they don't want characters. They don't want nuance. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take the best of a bunch of existing IPs, <laughs> smash them all together, and pretend I'm original, and present them in a whole new, different. Uh, dark hard R way. I'm going to take all the buzzwords that everyone who complains about comic movies say, like, oh, it would have been better if it was R, or um, uh, I like Zack Snyder, or whatever it is that they say on the internet, and I'm going to cater to all of them. Uh, so you're Starship troopers in it. Like, where it's, it's, it's a satire of the source material. The Universal Heroes canon, of course. Look, if <laughs> if calling it a satire is what gives you peace with enjoying it, then yes, okay. it will absolutely be a satire. <laughs> uh, uh, but nope, just face value. I'm just uh, mixing up Batman and Iron Man and Power Rangers and uh, and the flash forward scenes from Justice League, and I'm, I'm making it look like that. Time! Okay. There we go! Wow, we, wow, wow, wow. All right, there it is. Universal oh, yeah. Heroes. It's yeah. Swan. Uh, uh, fa- not a lot of facts to check, shockingly mm. enough. Uh, Dr. Evil went to evil medical school, so it wasn't a surprise that he uh, ended up being evil. Okay. He trained. Yeah, he trained. To go. Uh, that, that was actually really that, that's, that's all I have to practice. Do seahorses <laughs> mate for life? Oh, good, good question. I believe they do, but I, I will take a look. I mean, I know penguins do. Mm-hmm. They do. Seahorses mate for life. That yeah, auto completed. What's yeah. that? Wow. It auto it completed. <laughs> oh. I typed in seahorse M A T and it was like mate for life, mate for life. <laughs> no. Trust me, they do. It's a thing. Google really wanted us to know. Um, yeah, so uh, Dan, uh, Joe said you uh, spelling out what everyone is did not work for you, but I thought it did. My point goes to Dan. <laughs> mm. All right. <laughs> there really you go. Excited about seahorse. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought. Um, you know, I, at first I thought that uh, that would hold Dan back because he wasn't getting into the pitch, but. Everybody else was so general. Joe, you started to win me over at the end. I almost went Joe. I almost went Joe Star. Um, Sometimes they do. Yeah, and but they and they really dinged you with. Uh, they they were like bam bam bam. They they were like making it rain with. Just trying to make a real movie here, yeah. not trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with uh, and I, and I also was on the yeah Mystery Men and several others. But yeah, um, Dan's. Attention to detail took it for me. The ragtag group of clones in Japan. <laughs> I get it. Uh, Lon Harris. 
Uh, I feel like if Spencer had stuck with his original Reseda Avengers concept, mm. I feel like that was a really strong <laughs> sort of title and concept. And, but it, I felt like, yeah, we got too far away, which is kind of like... They all uh, made at the Arby's there. Yeah, they're like, they're <laughs> offshoots, they're the ragtag. I thought the, the other fighters did a really good job of sort of, yeah, we've kind of seen Interns of Field, Mystery Men, we've seen that story sort of play <laughs> out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so, it down, so it came down to me to, uh, <laughs> to, to Dan versus Joe. And ultimately, I agree, I think that Dan's level of specificity I knew who all those characters are. I get a sense for the team dynamics. You know what, like <laughs> when sense of justice is going to take over versus when it's sort of Captain Might. Uh, so I'm going with Dan as well. Yeah. Ooh, and watch out for the demon scorpion wing. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, we had another catchphrase for Dan's. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, are, are they heroes? Bitch, they might be. Bitch, they might be. Team of Might. And Might is kind of bolded because Captain Might. Captain Might. Yeah, yes. Captain Might. Uh, might Danielle, be. anyone on Twitter make a meme of Universal Heroes? Just kidding. <laughs> <We're not laughs> okay. No, guys, please do, please do, please do. Yes. I, I yeah, swear, it's never too late. I, will, there's I a, will retweet all of them if you make memes. memes. There's a lot of good movie posters to come out of today's, I think. I'm mm. really excited. Today's fight. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, guess what? It's a great moment in sports because oh, we are all tied up 1-1-1. One, one, one. One. Gentlemen, you've pushed it to the limit and here is our tiebreaker mm. okay and again uh, you guys know this but for everyone tiebreak works more or less the same as the speed round uh, they answer they call out their answers and then we uh, have them elaborate in the order that they called out their answers they first get 20 seconds each and then 10 second rebuttals and then we choose Danielle Lon and myself who sadly will not move on to the speed round. Mm. All right, here is our tie-breaking question. Call it the answer when you know what you want to say. What's the best action movie of 2018? Mm. Uh, I always get the title wrong, but you'll know what I'm talking about. It's the one with the raid guys, and I think it's called The Night Comes For Us. It is. It is. Okay, there you go. That was my pick, too. Thanks. Why did I help you? <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Um, oh, um, The Spy Who Dumped Me. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'll go, um, I'll go Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> My Fallout. All right, three very different, very good answers. Uh, so, we, uh, so we're going to hear from uh, Spencer, Dan, Joe, and then rebuttals in the same order. Uh, Spencer, 20 seconds begin when you speak. It's missing the director from the raid, but uh, and two, but it has everybody else. It has the martial artists. It's set in uh, modern day Indonesia where everyone owns a machete. Everyone's going crazy <laughs> on each other all the time. The stunt work is impeccable. I wonder how these people survived the shooting of the movie. Uh, a, a guy beats maybe 17 people to death with a pool table. All the various parts, the balls, the cue, the uh, the netting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Spy Who Dumb Me was a movie that did not do well at the box office and I think was really underrated critically. It had a great dynamic between Mila Kunis and Kate McKinnon. You had a great duo. It, it was that great setup of people that, the unlikely action hero. It really had a, a great action sequences and it was kind of a throwback to that 80s thing that you don't see a whole lot anymore. I thought it was, not only was it a great action movie, but I... I think Tom Cruise took the idea of the old 80s action star and made it uh, actually not cheesy and awesome and big and shiny the way that we like to remember 80s movies as. The the, the sequences in this movie are huge. The, 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 the chase on the motorcycle, the helicopter sequence, the rooftop jump, the guy's doing his own stunts. Everything is big and loud and really well done, just as tightly done as Night Comes for Us, but on a much bigger scale. The Night Comes for Us has quantity and quality of action. It has just enough story of a bad guy who doesn't want to be bad anymore, getting revenge on all the other bad guys, uh, and it's wall-to-wall -wall, uh, fighting on top of that. It's it's really... I think that you get a lot of what these other ones have in other movies. You get the big set pieces from other Mission Impossible movies. Iko Uo was, Uwe was in Mile 22, which also came out this year that had the same style of fighting. I think you had a great new duo, which is what makes The Spy Who Dumped Me great. I think Night Comes to Earth starts to overwhelm you at times. Uh, Mission Impossible paces itself with peaks and valleys a lot better and uh, let you enjoy each uh, piece for what it is. And just in terms of just action movie, it, it, it outdoes Spy Who Dumped Me. All right, wow. Um, there we go. Uh, Danielle Radford. Okay, so. Who does not move forward? Who does not move forward? Um, yeah, these were all great and compelling arguments. Um, I do have to say that I was, uh, I've de like 
definitely more taken by Joe. Um, he had a great um, argument about how Mission Impossible paces itself um, and how the action out does Spy Who Dumps Me. Um, but I did also appreciate, um, the, you know, some of the arguments about the pacing when it came to um, The Night Comes For Us. Um, so I'm going to go with, uh, as much as I love him, Spencer not moving mm. forward. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so uh, I uh, I thought uh, Joe really sold me, and uh, so it came down between uh, Spencer and Dan. I feel like Dan spent um, part of his time uh, uh, proving that this was an action movie worthy of these other two, whereas Sp uh, Spencer was just throwing the action at me um, with his breakdown of it. So um, I was really compelled by these two. And uh, Dan, well fought, but uh, for me, it's uh, Dan who does not move on. Uh, Lon. That one comes down to me. Uh, yeah, I agree. I thought Joe was on really safe ground. He, he picked the movie. I probably would have picked him and did a really good job. Uh, sort of defending it, and I liked his point about you know Tom Cruise kind of realizing the '80s archetype. So it did come down to Dan versus Spencer. Ultimately, I really liked Dan's argument about that it was more than just the action. It was a great sort of overall movie that had great action scenes in it. Whereas I thought Spencer focused on here's how great the action is without sort of talking about anything else having to do with the movie. So uh, I'm going to say that Spencer uh, drops out. Mm. Spencer, well fought. Thank you for playing. But you, sir, will be spectating in this speed Hello. round. All right, Dan and Your Joe. answer was right. Yeah, and people should see that movie if you haven't seen oh, yeah. it. It's on Netflix. Netflix. It's on Netflix, right? I recommend all three of these movies. They're all, yes. they're all yeah. great movies. I nice. do not remember the Mission Impossible came out this year. <laughs> Just the speed round. Right on. Uh, all it, right. It's a great movie, but Spike Dump Me, I recommend it. No. I liked it a lot. Good stuff, good stuff. Yes, three solid movies that everybody should watch if they haven't seen them. All right, uh, so th uh, that tie break did not count for a point. We are tied at 1-1 one, one going oh. into this speed round. And it works uh, the same way the last question just did. All right, here we go. Question one of the speed round. Best movie set on or around a major holiday? Mm. Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. All right. Joe, 20 seconds begin when you speak. I think Die Hard gives you the same values as if it's a wonderful life. One man has worth, plus it gives you uh, badass action and fight <laughs> scenes and explosions and shooting and squibs and now I have a machine gun, ho, 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 and one of the greatest villains of all time. It's a great, uh, uh, it, it, it hits all, it weirdly hits all the Christmas traditions and messages and morals that you want it to hit while Bruce Willis beats the crap out of vaguely European terrorists. I would disagree that it hits the Christmas messages and morals. As a matter of fact, people can't even agree that it is a Christmas movie. It's a Wonderful Life is a classic, and it transcends the holiday. And it's a wonderful Christmas movie, but it is also about, you, as you said, one man's worth. But not just one man's worth to one night. One man's worth to all of the lives that intersected his. It shows you how much you can touch the lives of others and how much you count as a person. I mean, I think if, if saving all those people from that building and those terrorists don't uh, teach you that uh, you're worth something as a person, I don't, I don't know what does. Uh, this movie, it's, it's not a great Christmas movie, but it's the better movie set around a holiday. I disagree. It's a Wonderful Life is universal. You can't show Die Hard to just anybody. You can't show it to kids. You can't show it to older people. They might not like it. Everyone can enjoy It's a Wonderful Life, and its message transcends to all ages across all genres. Okay, uh, Dan took that one from me. Uh, his opening wow. round just pierced my, again, my dark, cold heart. <laughs> Dan. Um, yeah, but that it really resonated. Uh, Danielle? Um, yeah, I have to agree. Both of them came out the gate with really strong arguments, but that last thing about, it, it, you know, Die Hard is great, but you can't show it to everyone. You might not want to show it to kids. And for a Christmas movie, it does need to be something that appeals to as many people as possible, so I gotta go with Dan. All right, Dan, you move ahead. Two to one. All right. I, I thought Die Hard was, I was like, that was a great answer. And then Dan pulls the It's a Wonderful Life card. he's Dan. Yeah. He's really good at this. <laughs> it's really frustrating. Okay. Um, we were talking about this great Thanksgiving movie earlier, in honor of train, planes, trains, and automobiles. John Candy or Steve Martin? John Candy. What a shitty question. Yeah, what? I, mean, I, I didn't write it. Yeah, I did not you write guys that. are cruel. Yeah, I did not make you make that. That's um, Sophie's choice. Okay. I mean, you don't have to pick Joe because I, I picked. Okay. Uh, All right. So, yeah. uh, so this is 
This is just in in general. In I general. Like just sure. in general. As, as a human being. <laughs> yeah, like judge their, their lives. lives. I don't know their hearts. <laughs> however, or however you want to play it. Okay, right. so we heard John Candy first from uh, Dan. Uh, Joe will be on the, uh, on the way back with uh, Steve Martin. I love both of them, but inside of the back of my head when I'm watching a Steve Martin performance, I'm always very aware that it is a Steve Martin performance, whereas John Candy is the everyman. He feels like he could be your next door neighbor. He feels like he could be your uncle. He feels like he could be that guy in the airport who offers you a ride home so you can be with your kid at Christmas. There's a certain endearing quality to him that I think a lot of people took to heart, and I... I think that's a wonderful quality about Candy, but when you're talking about sort of a pound for pound full resume, that's the one well that he always went back to, where Steve Martin had so much rain, he had the absurdity of the jerk. Uh, he could do romantic comedy with Father of the Bride. He could do more broad, silly slapstick with Three Amigos. I think the guy just has more in his arsenal uh, than John Candy did. Uh, so... The <laughs> I think he played more different kinds of roles, but I think that John Candy actually showed a lot of range. He was also in things like the Blues Brothers that weren't necessarily in the same thing. I just think as a personality, I personally take him to be more endearing, more personal. I think when your job is a comedic actor, endearing is great, yes, but funny is first. Funny is the rule, and I think Steve Martin just pound for pound has funnier roles, funnier movies, uh, a funnier complete IMDb. All right. All uh, of that felt gross. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't but, talk shit about Steve Martin. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. It. Right. Now, Martin Short. With with an unenviable task, I thought you both did well. Uh, Lon, what do you think? Yeah, tough, tough question. I thought uh, both fighters did great. Ultimately, I think I was more swayed by Joe and his argument for Steve Martin taking on such a wide variety of roles, whereas John Candy did kind of stick to that sort of heartwarming, endearing, charming kind of mode. So I'm going with Joe. For the same reasons, I'm also mm. going with Joe. We are locked up at 2-2. Here we go. Question number three of the speed round. Which superhero should we be more excited for? Which superhero movie should we be more excited for? Aquaman or Into the Spider-Verse? Into Aquaman. the Spider-Verse. Okay. Um, I heard Aquaman first from Joe, and uh, Dan got his first pick because he said Into the Spider-Verse just moments after Joe began to say Aquaman. Replay that. That's how it happened. <laughs> Please don't. Don't replay it. No, we got you don't it. have to. We got it. Okay. Uh, so, um, Joe, you... Uh, 20 seconds begin when you speak. Dan coming around the bend with Into the Spider-Verse. I think our favorite comic book movies are the ones that have tapped into other genres and played with them. Uh, Guardians was a space opera. Winter Soldier was a political thriller. Uh, Aquaman looks to fulfill the promise of just crazy 80s high fantasy with just crazy trippy colors and uh, and huge epic scope battles and insane visuals with underwater sharks and people are riding on them. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, you described a lot of what we've seen in the trailers for Aquaman, but we know this character already. He's been in two previous films, we know the outlines, we kind of know the sandbox this character is playing in. Into the Spider-Verse is great because you have, number one, the uh, format bending uh, ability that animation can do, and number two, you have so many different versions of the character interacting that you're not going to be constrained to just this particular interpretation of Aquaman. Into the Spider-Verse has a really good chance of falling into a convoluted mess of I'm a different Spider-Man and I'm a different Spider-Man instead of focusing on a really cool core story. Aquaman, we want to see this character uh, step up from the uh, the previous Snyder stuff. If you want to talk about the dangers of something falling into a convoluted mess, I would not pick a movie from the DCEU, my friend, Ooh. whereas we have Lord and Miller providing the script for this. They are proven, have a proven track record as strong writers and I can't wait to see what they do. Ooh, man, Ooh. Uh, both good answers, but uh, yeah, uh, Dan painted the, he got me more, a little bit more excited about his, and then he had some great retorts, so I go Dan. Uh, oh yeah, he won that one. Danielle? <laughs> Yeah, Joe, he won that one. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Other, any, anything else to no, add? No, that's please? really it. Like, uh, Joe really had me with the convoluted mess thing, and then Dan was just like, pound. <laughs> yep. DCU. Dan just was like, I don't care if he about dies, my mentions he dies. at all. <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, where I come from, we call this game point. Okay, so uh, Joe, you need to. Where are you uh, from? 
Um, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a regional thing yeah. in New Jersey. Um, actually, anywhere you'd be from, this would be game point. Uh, so, uh, Joe, you need it to tie the game. Dan, you take this, you take the day. Better Pixar sequel, Finding Dory or Incredibles 2? Incredibles 2. Finding Dory. Okay. Uh, so we have Incredibles 2 from Joe. Dan will be coming around the bend with Dory. Uh, Joe, 20 seconds begin whenever you speak. I think both of these movies suffer from repeating the beats of the first one, but Incredibles 2 uh, looks visually stunning. It's beautiful. The uh, the action sequences are huge. I would I would recommend that movie just for the train chase alone with the uh, with the cool stuff with the Elasta bike. Uh, whereas Dory relies solely on the charm of Ellen and that performance. Uh, Incredibles offers you all new visuals and really cool superpower fights. I don't think Incredibles 2 offers as much new as a lot of people say that it does. It's essentially the first movie, but you just swap the roles of Mr. Incredible and Mrs. Incredible, whereas I think that Finding Dory takes a, a completely new look at the character. You're in a completely new space. You go into the zoo. You have a lot of new people for them to interact with. It's returning to the world, but telling the story of a different character, whereas Incredibles 2 is sort of just a rehash of the original because people liked it. I feel like both of these are, are, are rehashy. It's, it's a question of which one do you want to watch again? And I think Incredibles 2, uh, it has that rewatch power. It's just a more fun movie. It's, it's loud and exciting, it's colorful. And I think the same can be said of the first movie. And if you're talking about the one that I want to watch right now, it's the one that's the most different from the other one. Incredibles 2 is very similar to the first Incredibles, whereas Finding Dory is a completely separate story from, the, from Finding Nemo, and that's what I want to see. All right, Juan. I think I have to go Dan on this one. I feel like he did a, a better job of explaining how Finding Dory sort of changes the formula and mixes things up, whereas Incredibles just kind of like takes what people like from the first one and, and, and redoes it. Uh, so yeah, so I think Dan. Danielle. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, they both, there's essentially the same argument both about the rehashing, about one being more. I do like how much Joe talked about the action bits, but as far as just saying which one, since that was the core argument of both, it was that it was a rehash, Dan was the one who brought the more compelling argument to kind of take that down. So I gotta go with Dan. Happy Thanksgiving, Dan. You just won movie yeah. fights. Yeah! Wow. What's I mean, it like? <laughs> What's it like to win movie fights, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, it's still fun. <laughs> it's fun to walk away it's a winner. Uh, nicely done, my man. Dan, uh, give us some, give us some thank, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for so many things. I'm always thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my girlfriend. I'm thankful for my friends, who I, I also get to lucky to count as uh, my coworkers and then my, my friends outside of work. Uh, I'm thankful for a lot of things, uh, particularly just even of these last few weeks, there are so many things that uh, the fact that we're still here is something to be thankful <laughs> for. Um, so yeah, I, I, I will be giving many thanks uh, as this is airing. I'm very thankful for a lot of things. Thanks, brother. Uh, nicely done, well played. Ooh, devastating speed round. Uh, Joe Starr, uh, you played damn good today, and uh, you're also uh, just funny and adorable. Thanks, uh, buddy. What are you thankful for, my friend? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for this for this bunch of idiots uh, that... Uh, Coming coming into work here is always uh, you got to remind yourself that uh, it's, it's definitely sort of a, a dream job that you know, we sort of made up and shouldn't exist. But I'm really thankful that uh, I get to come in and do this stuff with you guys every day. Uh, I'm I'm grateful that we get to cosplay as the writers' room that people want honest trailers to be. Whenever someone's like, "I wish you would just film the room every day," because usually we're just kind of quiet and very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. So I'm glad we get to uh, come out and uh, yell at each other and riff a little bit. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, uh, I'll be spending Thanksgiving with this guy, and he just gets to uh, rub rub this win in all day. Right on. <laughs> oh, good times. Uh, Spencer. Hey. Oh, what am I thankful well, for? Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're both yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, give us something you're thankful uh, uh, for. Uh, you, the viewer. You at home. Aww. You know, uh, you're the silent majority who uh, who just watches and enjoys. You don't need to comment. You don't need to subscribe. Just, I hope you had a good time. You yeah. know, we don't. Uh, we make no demands of you. Just don't be mean. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Thanks, Spencer. And uh, funny stuff today. Well played. Uh, Lon Harris. Very Nixonian to thank the silent majority. 
Uh, wow, I'm, I am, uh, I'm thankful for a lot of things. I'm turning 40 uh, over this thing. Wow. Wow. So, I'm thankful for surviving 40 years on this planet and yeah, getting to do this every day with these great people and uh, you know, all the, all the Screen Junkies fans who interact with us online and send us goofy stuff and uh, watch all these videos and comment. I'm, I'm very thankful to be part of uh, something like this and, and a project like this that we all get to work on every day. Heck yeah. Danielle Radford. Hi. Um, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm super grateful for everyone I work with. I'm grateful for all of the very nice people that continue to give me jobs. It, I don't <laughs> deserve it, but thanks. I appreciate it. Um, I am thankful for my friends and for my family, uh, for my awesome partner. I am thankful that they did not have the internet when I was young and stupid, and I'm very thankful that my mom's not on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my uh, nose. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I hear all that. Um, yeah, I am. Uh, I, I'm thankful for my fiance, uh, for my um, blind and one-eyed dog, Millie, oh, and uh, and, I'm, and I'm thankful that I get to. Um, I, I'll echo some of what Dan was saying. Like, I get to show up here and talk movies with the. Funniest, most knowledgeable movie people there are. It's like it's it's bonkers. How much fun is it to riff with these guys? Uh, the uh, the Lon Dan calling over there, and it's the whole be in this room. Oh my goodness! And uh, I'm thankful for owls. What up? Hashtag <laughs> Owl Nation. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I'm thankful for the food I'm gonna eat on Thanksgiving. And I'm thankful for you guys, everybody. Owl Nation or Shark Nation or whoever. Jump, jump. Uh, uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> And Corgi Nation. <laughs> so many nations. We don't uh, have a thing. We're just cute. We yes, don't have a, there's no chomping. There's no hooting. We're but, just uh, adorable. Yes, but uh, mostly uh, per, uh, Percival and Owl Nation. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching uh, Movie Fights, everybody. We'll see you next time. And I'm thankful for uh, JTE and Billy Biz. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving yeah. to those guys. Those guys holding it mm. down. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.